The Battle is the Lord's Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who've spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long belong. And as always, we want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 15. The context of it is Josiah, um, Jehoshaphat, excuse me, Josiah, Jehoshaphat has been uh, given him to understand that the Amorites and the Moabites are coming up by way of Engedi to attack Jerusalem. And uh, this force is a multinational force, so it's much larger than the army that he has to stand them down. And he knows that he can't stand them down. They don't have enough manpower. They don't have enough war, uh, war machines or equipment to be able to defend against this uh, multinational force. So Josephat does the only wise thing. When you can't win the battle on your own, you go to God. And boy, sometimes there are, there are those moments in time when you... You realize that you can't fight this battle. You know, sometimes, sometimes the battle is so complex and so hard that you you don't have the wherewithal to fight it. You don't have the strength to fight it. You don't have the right weapons to fight it. You don't have the right strategy to fight it. And you need a word from God. And as he goes to God, it's fascinating. He goes to God and he prays. And in the first, oh, like ten verses, he's talking to God about how God himself had stopped the children of Israel when they were coming in from doing battle against these two people groups. And he said, uh, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to let us do now? We need your help. We need you to step in and move in a powerful way. We need you to unleash us to, to fight for us. I mean, I like God's answer in uh, really starting in verse 15 he t- or 14. He talks about one of the prophets standing up and giving a prophecy. In verse 15, it says this, And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. And then he tells him tomorrow to go down by the cliff of Ziz and and, uh, at the end of the brook. And and it says uh, in verse 17, And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now, Jehoshaphat goes, and he arrays himself just exactly as the prophet has told him to. And then he does the most, the strangest strategy ever. It says, uh, in verse 21, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. So the choir went out ahead of the army. And it says, And as they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever and ever. And when they begin to sing the, to praise the Lord, the Lord said, Ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. And what happened was they all started attacking each other, and the Israelites literally just kind of come in and do mop-up operations and take uh, take the spoil because God fought the battle for them. Uh, there are situations that you're facing right now that you can't win, but it doesn't mean God can't win it. It doesn't mean God can't step in and do something supernatural. And so I, I think when we find ourselves over our head, we've got to turn to God and trust in him and just rest in his ability. The battle's not yours, it's God's. And if he's been maybe holding you back or, or somehow sort of uh, set, settling you down, I think we can turn to God and trust in God to do what he said. The mercy of the Lord endures forever and ever. I think we need to be praising God and allowing God's power to be unleashed in our situations. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I thank you for this night. I Thank you for these dear ones. I pray that you'd be with them in whatever battle they're facing. I don't know their battles, but I know that they're very real. I know that Satan is constantly attacking us. He's constantly (coughs) trying to discourage us and defeat us. But we're asking for your power to be unleashed in their lives. And I pray that you'd do something that was so supernatural it would blow people's minds, that they would be awestruck by your power as you move in, in a way to release them from bondages, to deliver them from demonic attack, to restore them to powerful spiritual relationship with you. Help them, God, to realize that the battle is not theirs, but it's yours, and you can help them to win it, just as you did Jehoshaphat in the Old Testament or Gideon or any one of the other individuals that your spirit showed 
yourself strong on their behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. You have a good night. The battle's not yours. It's the Lord's.